Hello, everybody. Um, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about October 14th, um, Group B League of Legends Worlds um, tournament preview and match predictions. I am sporting today a League of Legends Worlds tournament sweatshirt from 2015, I think this was. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm proud that, you know, I'm proud and excited at the same time of um, how well and how competitive the Riot Games tournaments, um, League of Legends tournament has gone so far. Um, excited about what's to come as well. Um, today, Group B is, a, is an exciting one, um, but just quickly to recap about what happened yesterday in Group A, we predicted T1 and then kind of like 55, 45 Fnatic and EDG. EDG had a good showing, and Fnatic just had an absolute disastrous day, uh, losing to C9, and you know losing to EDG, losing losing to T1. I mean, they had three losses, as you can see. They started the day <laughs> two and one. Now, final record is two and four, and Fnatic and Cloud9 from the Europe and North America regions respectively, are out of this tournament. Um, T1 and EDG, as a result, um, at, at, at those other teams' expense, advance to the next round. T1 has looked really, really good. And as mentioned on the video, um, hopefully you guys played a lot of T1 and, you know, had a profitable day like me yesterday. Um, you know, Zeus is probably the best top laner in the world right now. But then... There's an argument that JDG's top laner um, is just as good in 369. Um, we'll see how he does today for JDG. But yesterday, Zeus carried a lot of the games um, for that team. And he was the primary reason why T1 won the way that they did. Um, and EDG struggled a little bit against T1. But they still look pretty good. And I think Flandre and JJ need to uh, increase, you know, kind of pull up their form. And Scout was underwhelming as well. Um, but nonetheless, I think they're going to be fine. Um, it, it will depend on who they match up against, obviously, in the next round, in the knockout round. But uh, I think the outlook on EDG and T1 are both pretty good. Last thing I'll say about EDG is I wish they would start Junja at jungle. I mentioned that yesterday. Um, I hope they do in the knockout stage. JJ just that does not look great um that's i don't know how else i can put it so so hopefully you know we see those teams again and in, in, in later in the rounds in the knockout stage but without any further ado i want to talk about group b um as mentioned jdg um is in that group and they are three and oh they're in they're in a very good spot to you know advance to the next round like t1 and edg and then down one kia sitting at two and one G2, 1 and 2, and EG, 0 and 3. It was very surprising to see Cloud9 yesterday thumping Fnatic in the first game of the slate. And I can kind of see, like, with the time to prepare and maybe some with some time to lose the momentum and kind of you get complacent like Fnatic was, uh, maybe under, <clears throat> um, you know, under... You know, just uh, I don't know, like undervaluing the the competitive com competitiveness of Cloud Nine, maybe Fnatic, maybe that happened. Um, just not respecting the opponent. Um, that could happen again. Um, but I just don't think so. Like historically in League of Legends, when you see a big see a big upset like that the day before, the day or the day of, like earlier in the day, those teams, those like top teams, so to speak, um, pay attention to that and they you know, try to prepare better and all that. So I don't think that's going to happen to G G2 or Damwon Kia. Um, I don't think EG is going to beat G JDG. EG has a slight chance against G2 and then slight chance against Damwon Kia, but um, we'll see what happens there. But um, as you guys know, um, I really like JDG's chances um, in this tournament. Um, they are probably the best team fighting team in the tournament so far um i was gonna say top esports but they just look horrible in group c but for group a i mean group b we're talking about i think jdg is definitely the best team fighting team in in, the, in this group 
And from the macro game standpoint and the current meta favors the jungler and Kanavi has been one of the best junglers, if not the best jungler in the tournament so far. Um, their whole team plays around them, um, at least the three games that we've seen previously last week. Um, Yagao has been really good as well. Um, Hope and Missing have been solid in the bottom lane. 369, not that impressive, but he's holding down his laning um, down in, in the top lane. And against um, Nuguri, Broken Blade, and Impact, those are really decent top laners, um, especially Broken Blade. I really like him a lot. So that's a tough matchup that 369 has um, and has had and are going up is going up against again uh, today. Um, so I do, I mean, for DFS purposes, I don't really favor 369 to, you know, like smash like uh, Zeus had against Flandre, Wonder, and um, Fudge, where Zeus was clearly the number one top laner who had a, who was like basically a tier, tier above all those three other top laners that I just mentioned in Group A. I don't think that's the case for Group B here. I think the level of competition in the top laners amongst the top laners is very slim. Slim. Um, I mean, I can make an argument that Broken Blade has been the best top laner um, in Group B, but I think we can make arguments for each one of them, including even including Impact. Um, I think Impact is their best player for EG. Anywho, so that's a long way to say I think it's going to be a little more competitive than people think. I think JDG was... Um, Lucky, yeah, I think JDG, JDG was a little lucky to finish 3-0. and I know they're a good team. I know they're a great team. But the way the, the form that they showed to me in those three games was not as impressive as they've looked in the LPL, at least in the LPL summer, summer split. Um, so I do think JDG could take a loss today. Um, I don't think they're going to go three, uh, 6 and 0 whether it be against Damwon Kia or G2, I think JDG will lose a game today. Um, but I do think at the end of the day, I think JDG will advance out of this group. Um, they're Like I said, they're sitting in a prime position at 3-0. and um, Like I said, Kanavi playing well, favors the meta. It fits the meta really well. I like JDG's chances in that way. Um, between Damwon Kia and G2, this is the kind of... Um, the dilemma that I had between EDG versus Fnatic yesterday, even though it's a little different because EDG and Fnatic both had um two and two and one record. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. So um but Damon Kia and G2, yeah. I mean Damon Kia has one more win compared to G compared to G2. I think G2 just has looked I mean they were they looked horrible in the first game and then they looked really good against EG, but then they just did not look that great um, in the last game. So I think they're just so up and down. And I think the, the the inferior opponent in EG has made them look really good. I like Damon Kia's form right now, especially Canyon. Um, obviously Canyon was like a, like a superb tier one jungling, jungling player in the last world's um, last year's worlds but like this year he's been very underwhelming and in, in the lck so far but coming into the worlds he's been really good i mean i think he's been the best player along with i think showmaker has been okay i mean this is surprising to hear to some people probably but like duck dom and kellen in the bottom lane have been pretty pretty solid against a pretty good yeah, I mean, I guess they looked really good, but then I'm like, well, G2's bottom lane's not very good with Flacked and um, Targamas. And then EG's bottom lane without Danny, like with um, Kaori. And then I don't I don't even remember who the support is for EG, but like, man. So that's not the best measurement tool, in my opinion, to see how good Dr. McKellen, but then at the same time, they're playing against each other, right? This is a round robin format. So, I mean, I fully expect Duck Dom and Kellen to exert dominance again over those two top, uh, two bottom laners. Against, against, but against Hope and Missing for JDG, I think that's going to be the matchup to see. I think Yagao and Showmaker are probably about even. And then Kenyon is really good. Kanavi is really good. Um, but in the top lane, it's going to be between Nuguri and 369. And I have to give advantage to 369. Um 
I think Nuguri has been very underwhelming. I think he had a decent game against EG, but against EG, I mean, anybody looks good, right? So um, if I have to choose between Damon Kia and G2 today, I'm going to have to go with Damon Kia. I think the game between Damon Kia and G2 will determine, uh, you know, their respective fates, you know, for the world. I think G2 can definitely show up. Um, but like I said, Yanko's did not look that great. Um, and Caps looks pretty good. But I think with Showmaker, with his experience in the worlds, from the worlds, um, I think Canyon and Showmaker will again uh, do well. And then, like I said, Kellen and Duck Dom have an advantage in the bot lane against G2's bottom lane. So I'm going to have to give an edge to Dawan Kia. So again, I think it's going to be between G JDG and Dawan Kia to advance. And for DFS purposes, yeah. So you definitely want to stack players from those two teams who you, you know, from, from the teams that you think will win. Um, between Dalman Kia and JDG, like I said, I think JDG will take a loss today, whether it be from D, uh, uh, Dalman Kia or G2. Um, I think it's going to be a loss. So I think it's going to be a very interesting day for Group B. I don't think JDG is going to finish 6-0. and That's going to be, that's just really hard to do in, in, in an international tournament like this to stay focused and stay locked in. And who knows Dalman Kia or what G2 has, you know, has, has been cooking over the last week or so preparing for, against JDG. Um, so I'm going to have to go Dalman Kia, JDG, but I'm going to go JDG first place. Dalman Kia second place. I think there's a good chance that we'll see a tiebreaker game at the end of the day. Um, that's going to be a very interesting uh, game to watch. So a um, couple players that I would like to note, um, just based on feedback yesterday from the video viewers. I like Navi, obviously, and Canyon, like I mentioned, the junglers for these two teams, JDG and Dalman Kia. But like I said, the bottom lane for Dalman Kia, Duck Dom, and Kellen are probably the, the two players that I would like to focus. Um, I think their ownership will be lower um, than they should be. I think um, Hope and Missing obviously will be the mostly owned um, bottom lane. But I think Duck Dom and Kellen have been really, really good. And just based on the performance that they had over the court, over the sample, big, decent sample size of three games last week, I like I like Dalman Kia's bottom lane uh, as as my DFS favorite place. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions or want to chat League of Legends. And also, yeah, like feel free to share your thoughts about what I said and about your predictions and about who you think will advance and why. Um, I think that's the key. Um, but this video was sponsored by TrueDFS, as you can see here. Um, and here down below, please, please um, hit the like button below. It would mean a lot to me. Um, that keeps me going making these videos i'm planning to make a video for every group um this week and then about the knockout stage and so on and i'll have uh, my ultimate predictions of the knockout stage coming probably sometime next week so get ready for that but for today i like jdg Damon kia or Damon kia and jdg I think G2 could be a dark horse, but just based on the feedback and, and, the, and the showing they had last week, just they just did not look that great. Um, but they, you know, they're G2 from LEC. They could have a crazy game plan and that could work. But I prefer, much prefer uh, the junglers for JDG and Damon Kia, and it's the jungle meta. So anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.